ይሄ ዲስካሽኖች በሳምንት እየተገናኘ ነው ከመናደርገው እንደዚህ ማልፎ አልፎ መhall እናረጋቸው ሁሉ ሙይቶች ላይ ከኔ ጋር ቢሰለጥኑ ወጣቶች እንዲገኙ ፈልጋለሁ ማለት ነው ስለዚህ ትሬኒንግ ኦፍ ትሬነርስ የተመዘገባችሁ ስካይንድ ኦፍ አን አናውንስመንት ምን ማረጋ አለባችሁ እያንዳንዱ የዚህ አይነት ስልጣና የውይት ቀናት ላይ መገኘት አለባችሁ ማለት ነው ምናልባት የኢንተርኔት አክሰስ ችግር ሊሆን ይችላል ሞባይል ዴታ ሊቸግራችሁ ይችላል እረዳለሁ ለዚህ ነው በቡድን ሆኖ ምንላችሁ ምናልባት በደም ካሰባችሁበት እና የተሻለ ከዚህ ከስልጣና በተለይ ከትሬኒንግ ኦፍ ትሬነርስ ከፋር ገድመን ብዙ ምን ተቀብጣበት ስለሆነ በጓደኝነት አብራው ይሆናችሁ ከወዳጆቻችሁ ጋር እንትን በታደርጉ በተሰለጥኑ you know resource share ማድረግ ትችላላችሁ ያንዳንዱ ሰው ከየ ስልኩ join ከመያረክ በግሩፕ ከአንድ ስልክ ላይ ድምጽ ከፋ አርጋችሁ ኦዲዮን ላውድ ስፒከር ላይ አርጋችሁ አብራችሁ ማስተዋሻ ያያዛችሁ በተሰለጥኑ ብዙ ነገር ማድረግ ይቻላል አሁን በጣም የትምርትን በጣም ክሬቲቭ ሆነ ኢሞኖቲቭ ሆነ መንገድ ማሰብ አለብንና ባካቸው የነደድል ተጠቀሙ ትሬኒንግ ኦፍ ትሬነርስ ላይ የተመዘገባችሁ ሪከርድ የተደረጋው ንምሴሽኖች የምታዳምጡ በሳምንታዊ ፕሮግራማችን ላይ መገኘት አለባችሁ ሪከርድ የተደረጋው እንድትሰሙ አይደለም ፈልጎ ነው በተቻለ በጣም ላይቭ ዲስከሽን ላይ እንድትገኙልኝ ነው ፈልገው አይኖ አንድ አንድ ኢትዮጵያ ክፍሎች ላይ ኢንተርኔት ተቀዋርጧል ለዚህ ችግር አለ መብራት ችግር አለ እሱን እንረዳለን ግን ያን ሰዲስ አበባ አከባቢ ያላችሁ ተዋና ዋና ከተማ አከባቢ ያላችሁ ለመሰልጠን የተመዘገባችሁ ሚስ እንዳታደርጉ this is the kind of my announcement ሁለተኛ የቢዝነስ አይዲያ ያላችሁ ልጆች አሉ አንድ ወጣት በተደጋጋሚ የቢዝነስ हिसाब አለኝና ሐሳቤን ለአድማጮች ላቀርብና kind of hasab ስታይቶቻችሁን ድጋፋችሁን እፈልጋለሁ ያለኝ የነበር ባታ ላይ ፕሮፖዛል የጻፈ ልጅ አለ እሱን ማቀርባላችኋለሁ እንደዚህ የዶሮ ወርባታ ላይ አዳማ አከባቢ የሚሰራ ወጣት እንዳለና አውቃለሁ እሱንም በተመለከተ ምን ወያየ ጉዳይ አለ ሌላ ስኮለርሺፕ አግኝተው ቅዝብ ቅርብ ጊዜ ወደ አውሮፓ ለመምጣት እየተሰጋጁ ያሉ ወጣቶች በተለይ ከፋይናንሻል እንትንጋ ዶክመንት ከማቅረብ አቋያ እየተቸገሩ ያሉ ወጣቶች አሉ ስለነሱ ምን እንደነጋገራለን የመጀመሪያው ግን የእንግዳይን ላስተናግድና ከዛ በኋላ ወድነኛ አጀንዳዎች እና ሌሎች የጥያቄና መልስ ዝግጅቶች እንመጣለን ብራዘር ማቲዮ አ ዎዝ ጀስት ኤክስፕሌኒንግ ቱ ማይ ኦዲንስ ላይክ ዌ ሃቭ አ ትሬኒንግ ኦን ጎይንግ ሶ ኢትስ ካይንድ ኦፍ አን አናውንስመንት ፎር ዞ ሶ አትንደር ዘ ትሬኒንግ ጀስት ቱ ጆይን ዚስ ካይንድ ኦፍ ቨርቹዋል ዲስከሽንስ ፎር ዩ ኖ ኤክስፒሪንስ ሼሪንግ አንድ ኔትወርኪንግ አይ ኦልሶ ሃድ አን አዘር አናውንስመንት አባውት ዩዝ ዞስ ሁ ሃቭ ቢዝነስ አይዲያስ አልሶ as i have two or three use who did contact me with their business ideas so i did want to share uh, to the audience that after i present you we are going to discuss about this business ideas and also there are uh, use who got scholarship to study in europe and they have some kind of guidance and support we'll also discuss that after you present uh, like your ideas and your uh, experiences with my audience so Uh, dear friends today our guest speaker is Matthew Matthew is a uh, uh, graduate from University of Nebraska Lincoln uh, as we expand the operations of US Ethiopia as we build our uh, global contacts and partners one of our primary targets is to engage with the diaspora community the Ethiopian diaspora the African diaspora also the US citizens and uh, global citizens people who are eager to work together so Matthew became my best friend and uh, Daryl was the reason for me and for uh, Matthew uh, to get to know each other. I did invite Daryl. I think Daryl is not here. Later he will join us and give maybe his comments uh, about how we met and what we want to achieve together. So brother uh, Matthew, this is really very informal discussion. We kind of just connect with each other. share our ideas and inspirations and you know uh, discuss how we can work together how we can support each other and how we can motivate each other so uh, yeah from the brief discussion i had with you and with darren my understanding is that you are really passionate about supporting the african american community also the youth in africa and also uh, you are passionate about spiritual and uh, you know like uh, Uh, diff- different ways of uh, motivating people to reconnect with their uh, superpower and also to 
uh, have faced with uh, each other and we to encourage each other. I also know you have been trying to uh, have a digital presence. I know you have been composing music and some discussions on YouTube and uh, I already did talk to some of the youth in Yes, Ethiopia Forum, there are youth who also have a similar ambition. So I'll uh, maybe talk to you later after you present. So, yeah, who who is Matthew like? Please tell us about you, your study, and also what you are passionate about, and also how people can work with you. Like, where can be the starting point? And uh, so I have uh, like audience in this room, people from here, from US. Uh, those of your age or those very senior who have children of your age and uh, you know are very great partners and role models are in this discussion so uh, so please go ahead the floor is yours we're just very happy to have you and we are eager to hear what you're going to share with us I was thinking about going to medical school but um, I switched pivoted and switched to finance after a year and stuck with that the whole way ended up graduating with a finance degree and a minor in marketing and sales uh, so that's kind of where that's where I, I my path was was headed on from a professional standpoint um, and I think I mentioned it in my intro video but right now I work in the healthcare industry. I, I work for a company called NRC Health in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, where I work is on, on the sales team, so I try to sell our software and um, what we offer to health, the healthcare industry to various hospitals and health systems in the U.S. Um, well, yeah, that's kind of where I where I lie professionally. But I think uh, beyond a professional sense. Um, life is, is not limited to what you're able to accomplish professionally so we all have passions beyond um, what is directly tied to our work what is directly tied to our where our professional credentials are and particular for me uh, that came from my passion just for uh, history and religion and uh, socioeconomic struggles both the African American diaspora, but back home on the continent as well. Uh, I mentioned growing up in, in Lincoln, the, the 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 same opinions and the same lack of diversity also exists in how people view the world. From my standpoint, uh, in in our country, uh, African Americans historically have have you know not been treated well and systematically and through through different um, policies and, and behaviors between how we interact with each other there is you know still a lot of tension social and political tension um, but while I started to understand all of this I was also working getting my internship for my for, for my degree but also working in a community center in, in Lincoln Nebraska which is predominantly African American students and predominantly lower income students and so I would help with uh, you know programming and, and helping them with activities during the summer you know trying to keep them busy but when they were in our our care um, and through that I learned a lot of things about the youth specifically african-american youth I learned a lot of things about you know where their mind is at what their worries are what their fears might be and I was learning this at the same time that I was, you know, reading about history and learning more about African American history in this country, but also the fact that my mom is Ethiopian and, you know, from my family network, I hear about all the things that have been happening in Ethiopia and, and that happened in Africa and beyond. So I was trying to tie together the two and I'm like, well, we are a lot more similar than we think, you know, there's, we're in two different worlds, but from African American standpoint, or in an African on the mainland standpoint, a lot of the same things are happening, and we are disconnected in in this pain. You know, a lot of times Africans and African Americans 
in the United States actually clash with each other. Their viewpoints often clash because there's some sort of disconnect between the two bodies of people. Um, so I was fascinated with that. I was, you know, trying to teach some of these uh, youth at the community center about their own history. And most of them didn't know about their own history, which had only happened really 40, 50 years ago. Like th their grandparents lived through the civil rights era in the U.S. And here they are, they don't even know about it. They don't know about the lessons that can be learned from it or the people who, who trailblazed a path for them to be able to uh, live more peacefully than, than it was back in, in, in the day. So that inspired me a lot to just, just to try to start learning about history, both from an African standpoint and from main, uh, mainland America, African American standpoint, uh, inspired me to keep learning. I was already, you know, making music, listening to music and things of that nature. So I just started to, you know, all the things that I was that was floating around in my mind, beyond the professional standpoint, beyond school, um, you know, there's a lot of, of energy that comes to your mind and things you want to get loose. So I just started making music because I was already, you know, involved in music before, um, before I started thinking about these things. And then I just thought, hey, let me just start. Whatever I'm thinking in my mind that I think would be worth sharing, why, why not make a platform and, and give it more visibility? <clears throat> so that's where I'm at today. You know, professionally, uh, I'm looking to get a higher degree just so so I can, uh, you know, have more opportunity and stability in that area. But then on the side, you know, I think life is, is, is a lot more than what we're able to accomplish professionally because um, you, don't, you don't leave your life with your degree. You don't leave life with all the money you accumulated. Uh, so there, there's more to life, and, and that's where I'm at, trying to combine the two and coexist. Mm. Uh, so can I do anything I should add, anything I'm not touching on that you would like me to touch on? Yeah, I think... Yeah, tell us more about like what you have been discussing about on your YouTube. Uh, yeah. What's the name of the YouTube page? Some of yeah. them maybe yeah. didn't see it like because people join, especially during live session. Yeah. Maybe they okay. didn't log in like for a week on LinkedIn. So just tell them more yeah. about, especially yeah, the yeah. music and how you are trying to, Absolutely. you know, create. Yeah. So really, it, it's it's. I'm, just, I'm new to, to the platform. I haven't actually started posting music or, you know, posting my videos about these topics for that long. So really, I'm just just trying to master my craft of, of creating content, creating music, and mastering the, 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 the art of uh, operating in a digital space. There's a lot of things that... A lot of things that you can do from a marketing perspective and a content creation perspective that allow more people to, to see what you're whatever you're doing whether you're selling a product or doing what I'm doing which is trying to spread a message so that's where I'm at it is mastering that craft learning about how I can build a community that, that understands what the point is and why why it can be valuable for anyone who would see it um, so my, my uh, social media um, is Kafa Kid. My grandpa is from the Kafa region. Uh, he moved to Addis when he was a boy and started a, a, a business there. Uh, so that, that was my name comes from, from my Ethiopian uh, heritage and, and culture from that standpoint. And as far as what I'm creating, Really what it is, is um, videos, it's me commentating on, on videos of, that relate to spiritual nature, uh, that relate to political, political types of, of videos, and in my reactions I offer up 
a biblical standpoint. So if there's a video that I'm reacting to, commenting on, you know, oftentimes I'll reference a verse in the Bible that is directly relevant to that. And the same is kind of in my music. Uh, so I'm, in my music, I'm on Spotify or uh, Boom Play or any any streaming platform you can find my music. My name is also uh, Kafka Kid, but. Really, my, my, my ultimate goal is to break down the walls between Africa and, and uh, African Americans, right? I mentioned earlier that there's a lot of tension between our, our groups of people. And I think a lot of that comes from a lack of understanding. So through, through my videos and through my uh, music, the message I want to portray is that, hey, we should be connecting with each other. We should be learning from each other about our common struggles, um, about our common uh, pitfalls in our own communities. What what keeps us back? What keeps us from developing as a people? Uh, I think there's a lot of music out there that is actually destructive to our community. And it makes people, it shows people a wrong image of what, what we should be going after in life. So, you know, where, where I try to pivot my content is simply off the, the conclusion that the Bible offers, which is if we try to fix the world's problems with our own knowledge and our own wisdom and detach it from from the mission that, that God has put us on, then our degrees have no power. Our our wealth is has no power. It will only take us so far. Or, you know, our our networks will only take us so far if we detach from what God tells us. So in my own work, right, how could I ever unite two peop two two different thoughts, thoughts and two different minds from the African Americans to the Ethiopians or Africans if if that is not at the center of my mission. That is the only thing that can unite, you know, so much gaps in thinking gaps in what we're trying to achieve as a people. So, yeah, you can find me on, on uh, YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, all at Kafa Kid, K-A-F-F-A, Kid, K-I-D. Um, yeah, I'm really just getting started. As far as how you could connect with me, you could follow me on socials, to throw me a, shoot me a message on, on LinkedIn or, or on Instagram or any of those platforms and, and I'll definitely connect with you and see where where you're trying to go in this space if you if you do make music if you are trying to approach it from a religious uh, standpoint or a spiritual standpoint uh, for me that that's where I think the root of our problems lie and that should be the foundation of how we solve problems uh, from the wisdom that we can gain from the Bible Wow so, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, that was that was really that's really all I all I have from from hmm. from my standpoint. Uh, long term, you know, I want to be able to actually bring kids from America to Ethiopia. Uh, some of my family, most of, a lot of my family, still lives in, in Ethiopia and Addis. And uh, long term, I, I would love to. Uh, to bring you know people back to Africa so they can tangibly see you know where they come from you know black people were not born in America not to say we should leave America you know the system that where we at is, is where we're gonna have to stay but we should at least be more aware in our hearts of, of where we come from and why it matters so I think you know I talked to my colleague Daryl uh, who introduced us and you know he's from he's from Chicago which has a lot of different problems it has a lot of historical problems that is very rooted in some of the, the negative history about this country right and a lot of the people in that community seem disconnected from a lot of the wisdom and a lot of the cultural identity from being African so I think a lot of the cycles that some of our youth are in in, in underserved communities, we can break 
we can break that cycle by simply strengthening their identity strengthening who, who they who they who they think they are about themselves and what they think they're supposed to do in this life you know and, and long term I think you know connecting them from a music and information stage and a spiritual stage to Africa is, is step one and that's the base of it and I think if, if some youth had the opportunity to visit which is what I want to do in the long term, and you know, visit different historical sites, interact with different uh, organizations and different people in a country that's so much different than America, and has so much, so many different people than America. I think that can be powerful in bringing their identity back and strengthening it, and strengthening their their purpose of, of what they're called to do uh, by God in their life. So. That's where, that's where the long-term vision is. But you know, the first step is is learning more. That's the first step: mm-hmm. learning more, meeting more people, hearing from people in Ethiopia, and hearing from the youth in, in America, and learning more about what the pain points are, and and, and trying to, to solve that accordingly. But there. Wow, amazing. Yeah, this is really very inspiring and uh, I feel so much motivated and uh, grateful for <laughs> Daryl, brother Daryl. Thank you so much for introducing me and Matthew. You know, uh, Matthew, you did really speak about some of the most, you know, burning topics about our country, our people, both in the diaspora and uh, in Africa, especially. The fact that we fight among each other, uh, yeah. the fact that we fail to cooperate, and uh, yeah. how you also try to use your, uh, you know, uh, opportunity and uh, uh, the resources you have to, you know, change this narration and to, uh, you know, expose, especially the diaspora use with Africa, with their home, with their. Uh, ancestors and see how things are um, I'm very happy if Daryl you can say a few words and then I'll invite our brother Seifu from California he could speak a little bit about like how he was trying to help uh, you know by connecting the opportunities from here from US to mm-hmm. you know the things that we can do in Africa so Daryl I'm trying to open your audio very happy to have you guys together <laughs> i'm very uh, i'm very glad brother daryl how are you how was the day i am doing well man you know i got in a little late i'm so sorry for no that. no but, you just came at the right time when we needed your voice so i'm I really very happy that, <laughs> i got to hear the bulk of the conversation and I, man i'm just over here clapping i'm telling you man like y'all are doing a heck of a job i'm so happy y'all got to like kind of like you know C- communicate and yeah. set this up you know yeah. it's so much great information going on uh matthew mentioned that uh you know he wanted to like fix that divide that we have between africans and african americans i'm all about that man so it's good to see you all just having this conversation uh with the group of individuals that we're having this conversation with man i think it's gonna be it's gonna be the start of the bridge man it's gonna be the start of the fix mm. so i'm just really happy to assist in any way i can so like Matthew said, like you guys can send me messages on LinkedIn, uh, follow me on LinkedIn, connect any way we can, and um, see how we can work together. Yep. I really sure. thank you so much. I mean, you're the reason, you know. I wanted to mention oh, here. Well, getting messages, so that's love. You so know, the value right. of friendship. We to make it work. A lot of Ethiopians <laughs> will reach out to you now. You yeah, guys you know, are really in Ethiopia man, now. I just want to sit back and kind of like <laughs> listen to what's going on, you know, and um, like I said. Um, be the be the vessel to us uh, to fix some of this stuff yeah. so yeah so daryl man, maybe man, people would away, you know people might ask who is daryl like what is he doing how do they know each other would you briefly tell about like what do you do at unl how did you come oh, here away, just briefly <laughs> 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 I have been so too. yeah man um just briefly like for I them said, to know man, who you are. Y'all dropping some really good information. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the people that's listening, Matthew, the music is out of this world. Uh, 
<laughs> Man, the song "Not My Hands." Um, y'all got to go listen to that immediately. Yeah, that's, that, that's a hit right there. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, it's it's really good song with great messages. You know, I, I think one of the coolest things that, um, about that song is just find, a, a person finding their way back to God. You know, a yeah. lot of times we lose, we lose our path. You know, we kind of like, and then we just kind of like just out here, just trying to find like our direction. But you know, mm-hmm. when you try to find your way back to God, you know, that's I think that direction is very clear. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's it's taught in the Bible. You know, and I feel like that music really touches on that. It really struck a chord with me. You feel me? It helped me try to figure out like what way I'm going. You know, it, it, it's it's really good information out there, y'all. So like I like I uh, like Matthew said, go follow his music. You mm-hmm. know, go follow his breakdowns. He does great information. Um, and also Fakadu, you know, he's always he always got the things going on. You know, he's always trying to connect individuals, having these weekly networking events. So yeah, man, y'all gotta make sure y'all stay tuned with Fakadu as well. So. Yep. Thank yeah. you. I don't know if you're there, Fikadu. Thanks so much. I can hear. Yeah, I'm, I'm just. Pass it back to you. I'm just enjoying like having two of <laughs> you guys together that, on my platform. Think, you already know what time it is. Yeah. To your point, if if I could, you know, offer any advice, I know Fikadu uses these networks networking sessions as advice, um, and there's power in networking. You know, we are a long distance away, but technology has allowed us to be in the same space and share mm-hmm. lessons and, and and share experiences, right? And what I will say is is the experiences between us are, are a lot a lot different. They're, you know, we've we've navigated life a lot mm-hmm. differently, but I think throughout that there is a common thread in all of us, right? There is a common layer in our in our nature, in our nature as humans that does connect us so the, the things that separate us and, and differentiate us I think those are honest conversations that we can have and, and a platform like this allows for for that dialogue to happen for learning to happen mm-hmm. even if you know you don't get a chance to you ask a question or maybe you have questions about hey what's wrong and what's going on in the African American community what what troubles are you guys facing right or I could ask the same, you know, what's going on in Ethiopia right now? What is what is the, the pain with the youth? Mm-hmm. You know, is, it, is, is there something politically holding you guys back? And just being aware of each other's mm-hmm. problems and each other's struggles, mm-hmm. I think, can be a, a beautiful thing because someone might attack it. Someone might address these problems from uh, a, a different way. You know, maybe you have a, a business or maybe you're... Uh, an infrastructure developer maybe you're actually in banking and you're trying to address these issues in a different way you know having the awareness uh, of the different types of skill sets and different types of people trying to address this issue in a different way you know I just happen to be addressing problems through a spiritual lens that's where I fit in Mm -hmm. but who knows some of those might have some of those things might have uh, close correlation to some of the infrastructure problems that we face or you know how, how are we how are we selecting people to represent our communities how, how does mm-hmm. the, the voting occur in the political system how yeah. is the education system maybe if you're a teacher or or a administrator in a school system how mm-hmm. does what we're teaching our kids empower in the long run what they end up doing in in uh in a school administrative space how does that empower how they make curriculum how does that affect our our communities? You know, five, ten years down the line, what what do we want our kids to, to know about our, their identity, and what what do we want them? How do we want that to empower what they end up doing professionally? Who they end up trying to help? You know, because there's no industry that exists without a need. Every industry exists because there is a need for something. So within our community, there is a lot of different. There's a lot of different ways you can fulfill that need. Um, but for me, you know, I'm just trying to master, I'm trying to master the Bible, I think. The, the revelations given by the Bible, embedding that in my music and in, in my platforms can can be something that maybe helps direct someone on, on a path in their professional, you know, in how they help the community. 
I couldn't agree more, man. You you, you hit the nail on the, the nail on the head, bro. Mm-hmm. Like you really do. You know, it all like you said earlier. It all starts from kind of understanding and learning more. You feel me? And like when I first met Ficado, even when I met you, you know, like you know, the initial meeting was about me just kind of like learning. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And like it really helped me out on my path, just being even a Nebraskan or just being an individual, like in my own my own journey. You know, learning from Ricardo with his uh, his time in Ethiopia, learning from you, learning from your mom, you know, it, it, it all starts with this understanding, right? So the more we can have these type of conversations to, uh, you know, to, to help that understanding really mm-hmm. does help people in their journey. Um, I just want to give like a real, a, a quick one. Um, so it was a book by Eugene Robinson called The Disintegration, and it kind of talks about some of the issues that exist between the African-American community and mm-hmm. African community, right? A really good book. It's one of my favorites. And at the end, it kind of talks a little bit more about how we can work together. It's been mm-hmm. a while since I looked at it, but it's actually in my bathroom, so I'm going to go check it out uh, to later, and I'll get like, more of a breakdown on it. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah it, it, it's a really good book just to kind of like, you know, have to understand there is some, there is a divide there, but if we work together, that we really can kind of change. Um, we can change a lot of things in this world. You know, um, I think you know, as we talked before, African Americans have a, a lot of like access to resources, right? Um, that can be that can help assist a lot of Africans, and you know, and vice versa, right? There's a lot of knowledge that exists in Africa that can really help with our understanding of who we are as African Americans, the descendants of Africans. You know, so we really, really can work together to benefit each other. So um, I really do look forward to it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Darrell and Matthew. Hey, I have I have a guest yeah, I like it, a friend. I it. Oh man. You know, I came in late, and I was like, man, I hope I didn't miss everything. <laughs> but when I came in, y'all was already getting to it, man, and it was a lot of good information there. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Matthew, so, you know, you guys are really amazing. I mean, well, I mean like, that, that's really yeah. all I have to to talk about um, from a professional standpoint. You know, if, if anyone else is in the finance field, I could can offer a little bit of knowledge from, from my experience mm-hmm. in the business field. Um, for me, where I, I, I recommend people to look at in, in finance is, you know, try to find a, a, a stable a stable industry, for example. Right now, I mean, I'm in sales. The sales industry as a whole can be a little bit more vol- volatile because it's driven by a need for that product. So if, if the economy is not doing well, that sales organization, you know, will, will be at risk and, and the career risk might be higher. But in, in the finance realm, I would recommend people to look in, into healthcare. That is a stable industry. You know, people will always need healthcare. Um, mm. Specifically, you know, even if it is a sales industry, but it's, you know, selling to healthcare organizations or a, a, a need or a service that a healthcare organization would, would use, I, you know, I'd recommend looking into that. Um, and if anyone has any questions about other other avenues that I considered taking after I graduated in the finance industry, you could certainly shoot me a message on LinkedIn. Um, I have a feeling, you know, Ethiopia's financial sector might might be slightly different. There might be different a different job market or a different, you know, industry as a whole. Oh, someone raising their hand. Yeah. Uh, thank you, brother well, Matthew, and thank Darren. I just wanted to uh, ask Brother Seifu from oh, California. Hi, uh, this is Seifu. Um, I've been with Vicaru's uh, group for quite some time. Uh, Good morning. Thank- Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for your presentation. Um, Absolutely. I was struggling to listen to you um, because of the ch- time change between California and where I am now in, in Europe. Mm-hmm. I was struggling to listen to you. But anyway, I think I've got the vibe, uh, okay. most of your, your thoughts. Yeah, it is yeah. my understanding that uh, you are hoping to help the Ethiopian youth. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, par- partially. Also, some of some of the really, I would say, the African diaspora as a whole. So, you know, African Americans in the United States, um, but also, you know, I think Ethiopians in in the United States and on, on mainland Africa. The, some yeah. of the content I create is, is for the purpose of. of inspiring people in those demographics but i think even if you're you know asian or a european 
you know, I, I, I think there is some lessons to be learned from hmm. the, the separate cultures and, and what other cultures are going through. So. That is great, really. Uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, you thinking about this, about doing this, is quite an inspiration by itself. Hmm. I really, I mean, um, uh, happy to hear that and um, encourage you to follow your dream, to connect sure. with the African community, uh, African American community, as well as uh, uh, the Africans, uh, the youth in particular. Absolutely. And if we can be of any help to you, uh, yeah. we would be happy to assist you. Um, I, in particular, um, have done some work back in Ethiopia and also in Kenya, one project. Okay. Uh, it, it just happened accidentally like 18 years ago, and I've been at it for since, ever since then. Hmm. And I've uh, been helping um, young people get education and get graduate uh, graduation degree. Yeah. Um, four year degree and get a, a get employed. Uh, so far, um, as of this year, we've had about 98 students from the village in which I was born, uh, get education, get educated, a four year yeah. degree. Wow. And uh, th it's been quite a journey for me at least. And I, I woke up a, a little early, uh, like in, in my um, mid forties, mm. and it's been, uh, it's been really a great project to lead and guide people to focus on education, and then uh, get them very good jobs. Yeah, uh, that they can earn some money and support the family, their own family as well as extended family yeah. members, mm. because we need each other uh, in Ethiopia. Yeah, uh, one cannot live by himself and just for himself. Really, uh, mm. they have, they have. Exactly. We have families back home, exactly. back mm. home, and uh, within our surroundings to help out. So, if you're, if you have few ideas like that, from mm -hmm. what, you know that you want to support, from wherever you are, you know, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to lend some ideas. Yeah. to you. Mm. That's awesome. I. I I appreciate that safely your your experience and you know 18 years is a long time to be operating in that space i'm sure you faced a lot of roadblocks and a lot of challenges in, in how you successfully accomplished some of those uh, work with some of those students and people so i'm definitely curious to learn more definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly uh, this year uh, it was a very special year one of our students was um, at our very first preschool. Um, I remember him vividly. He was struggling to read uh, words like hat or cat or house. Mm. I took I took some books with me um, in 2006 to help the, the preschool get some a good education. Yeah, and uh, and this year. He graduated from a four-year university, actually from the top university in the wow. country, Addis, Addis Ababa University. That's amazing. And, in accounting, and he was being interviewed at uh, Commercial Bank of Ethiopia for a position. So it okay. gives me a really a wonderful mm. um, joy to see yeah, him go through that, really. Mm. So whatever you planned early on uh, in, in people's lives, it really pays later on. Mm. A beautiful story. Yeah. So, what are uh, you know? You mentioned reading was a challenge for him. What other problems were you trying to address? You know, in, in some of those you know ground level problems that you had to address in order to accomplish a, a long term vision. So, I can't. Yeah. Well, the, the problems are numerous. Um, I, I I think one lady. Um, the lady that started uh, to help me out with my projects, uh, her name was Lana Rees, said it best about the problems that my village and every people in Ethiopia were, were facing. She said uh, this, uh, Seifu, she said, uh, the 
problems, you know, trying to solve the problems in your in your village is like uh, spitting in the ocean. Yeah. But Jim and I have decided to spit anyway. So <laughs> you can. <laughs> Jim is her husband. Okay. And uh, they have been staunch supporters of my my projects in Ethiopia uh, ever since then. Um, yeah, there are many many problems in Ethiopia. But let's let's help people get educated. That's where the problem begins to uh, get resolved a little at a time. Mm-hmm. And once people know how to read and how you know that they belong in a large community called the world, yes. and they open up their eyes, I think uh, that does push them towards a better life or a better uh, living standard. Yeah. So some of the things that, uh, to mention just some of uh, the things, my, the kids that I uh, have been teaching, they didn't have shoes, they didn't have proper clothing. Mm. Um, they didn't have, they were mostly shepherd boys, just like I was back home in Ethiopia uh, until, I, until the age of 12, uh, until my dad decided to, to send me to Addis Ababa to get uh, some education. There was no, there was no school in my village at the time. Mm. But thank God there are, there's high school now, there's uh, elementary, there's uh, preschools that I built. Um, there were, there are three of them that I built in my village, and other, uh, another three in other villages. Uh, so six pre- preschools in total that I built, yeah. uh, two elementary and one high school in my village. So uh, it's been quite a journey, like you said. The other problem that I uh, can bring up is uh, the, the girls' success ratio. Uh, girls go through a lot of problems in that community, in that, in that society in general, in Ethiopia for that matter, in the countryside in particular. So they, uh, they, they are struggling to catch up with their uh, peers, with their, uh, the boys, really. Mm-hmm. The, the uh, uh, graduation ratio for girls was pretty, very low, like five to ten percent. Sometimes, if if things are good, fifteen percent maximum. This is from yeah. uh, university, of course. Yeah. Um, it, it, there are many many issues, like uh, lighting to, to study after school. There is no one to uh, tutor them. And they have uh, ministerial periods uh, on a, on a monthly basis that they mm. that forces them to stay at home, and uh, they also run run to uh, rivers to collect water. Um, mm. You know the problems in the rural Ethiopia is humongous, really. Mm-hmm. So those are some of the things that I uh, ran into. Yeah, that's that's great insight. Um, so I have a question that maybe you know could be valuable to the group from a from a programming perspective and getting getting your ideas off the ground and actually transitioning from an idea to the front lines and, and you know working on projects in places and with people. What were some of the financial burdens or, or hurdles that you had to overcome? You know, who did you have to look to? to actually get some of your ideas off the ground? Good question. Um, yes, there were uh, problems early on uh, to start with a small amount. Uh, but what I did was multifaceted. Uh, number one, I, I, I collected a number of young people from our church and did a car wash, a car wash, you know, at a car wash event that you can collect five dollars here, ten dollars there, and if people know your objective, they will give you more, like a hundred dollars. And uh, Jim and Lana that, that that spoke that word to me, she gave me a high five hundred dollars check that day. So wow. I collected all that. I sold all of my um, collections from. Africa, you know, I used to go to Kenya and, and Ethiopia on a uh, you know, every uh, every three years or so, and collected a lot of uh, artifacts. 
I sold all that in, in a, at a garage sale um, and back at a church. Uh, and uh, during that year, I collected about $6,000, ran to Ethiopia again the, the same year to fix a water problem that the community, my community was going through. It was during that time that I got this idea to immerse myself into the problem that they were facing on a daily basis, like lack of water, lack of education, lack of uh, a, a clinic or uh, health issues. They have nothing, practically nothing. And I, I, told, I asked myself, what am I doing in the United States when my people were suffering? Mm-hmm. So going back to your question, um, I started with that $6,000, but later on, uh, some Americans joined me and said, let's start a small nonprofit organization that people can contribute mm. uh, some money mm. and get tax tax uh, uh, deductions. Yes. So yes. that was a great idea. Four of us got together and started this uh, organization called East African Village Outreach. So okay. that's the name of our organization. And you can um, search online East African Village Outreach or you can type in www.eabo.org and you can learn more about it. So ever since then, our annual uh, income has been between fifty and $60,000. Some years up to $100,000 when I have a lot of, a big project like a, a water project yeah. that costs about 40, uh, the last one cost me about $46,000. And the very first one, the big project that I did uh, cost me about $55,000. So depending on the, uh, what kind of project that I'm involved in, uh, you know, I get money uh, based on on the need, basically. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, to uh, get the on the ongoing operations like uh, paying the the teacher salary and other things, uh, you know, it's but thirty thousand dollars is enough to cover the cost of. Uh, Teaching uh, the teachers' salaries for, for, for all those um, the preschoolers. So it's been uh, quite a journey, to be honest. Yeah, I bet. Um, that's awesome to hear the the perseverance and the the uh, the grit that you had to use to lift some of that off the ground. If you don't mind, uh, I'm curious about the notion of of sacrifice, like. If you could offer up, you know, in your own experience, what are some things that that required sacrifice, you know, from a time perspective or from an emotional perspective from you? Because a lot of times I see um, in in even in the African American community, uh, once people are are educated, uh, they might be successful. And to your point. They don't have a, a, a connection. They're just living for themselves, living their best life. And they forget, you know, where they came from because they're living life. But in in your kind of work, what did it require from yourself from a sacrifice perspective to accomplish helping others? Yeah, good question again. Um there are there's uh, so much so many sacrifices. Where do, where can I start? Um, your valuable time that you can spend with your family members, um, your your own money uh, to go back and forth to Ethiopia, or uh, you know I I do also uh, give money to the organization uh, for for all those purposes. Um, uh, also, not being at home. Um, not be, not going on vacation with the family, my, with my own family. That's mm-hmm. another sacrifice. Uh, the other thing is uh, spending time in Ethiopia. After spending so many years in the United States, the convenience in the U.S. is t- tremendous. Yeah, you get up, you take shower. The, there's, you know, the road itself is so convenient. Back yeah. in Ethiopia, the three weeks or four weeks that I spent. Is full of inconveniences. Uh, yeah. Going 
you know, from one office to another office to get things done. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of problems there. Um, you know, t- taking taxis or t- even driving. I, I used to drive uh, in Addis Ababa. It was just quite a quite a mess. Uh, if, uh, it it is it is uh, th- there's so much sacrifice. Expect so much so many sacrifices. Mm. If if you can't sacrifice. Um, if you can't give yourself to the projects that you are working on, like uh, Brother Futaru is doing right now, he spends a lot of time. I even he- hear him talk um, in the middle of the night. You know, I, 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 I just, there's so much commitment from his point of view, from his side. So if you don't, if you're not ready to sacrifice those types of things, then, um, you know, I wouldn't start anything. Just um, once you started, you know what to do. Really, uh, the sacrifices are not much. This is what I told to myself um, when I was ready to do the work. Yeah. What would what good would it do if the story at my grave says, "Okay, Seiku was born on such and such year. Um, he came to." had his lot to get education, went to the United States, established uh, a life, and died. That's a poor way of dying, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there has to be some more story to my my life. This is what I think, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it takes the courage to say that, but that, that, is, that is what I have done. Wow. Well, it's it's a I appreciate those words. It's a it's a heavy call to action, and I think you know some of that resistance, you know, would deter people from uh, trying to spark change. Because I think even in you know maybe you're uh, trying to get into the political science space, or maybe you're trying to get into the uh, law space. I think coming from the the disposition that you're coming from and trying to implement change on the backs of that, I think people will naturally oppose you. They say, you're crazy or, or, you know, we can't do this because ultimately there is a sacrifice and not everyone wants to make the sacrifice of inconvenience or, or, or financial gain. So, insightful words. Yeah, speaking of uh, sacrifices, um, one thing, one thing I can add is that it's been about 18 years that I have t- since I have taken a vacation, honestly, uh, to myself. Uh, this year, I decided, okay, there, you know, the, the situation back home is not inviting to go home at this time. There's so much uh, struggle. There's just fighting going on. So I decided, okay, uh, let me go to Europe. Uh, there are there are places there are places that I've never seen. So my son and I decided to come hop on the uh, plane and come here. That's why I didn't hear your your speech uh, fully. Uh, I was struggling because of time ch- time change. I was sleeping yeah. uh, in the middle. Yeah. But mm-hmm. but anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, contact me offline and we can talk more. <coughs> we'll be happy to uh, lend you some support. Yeah, that's awesome, Sifu. I, I appreciate the time and, and the knowledge this morning. Of course, Matt. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much, you know, brother Matthew. Uh, Seifu is like our role model. Like thank he's you. he's an Ethiopian. Sure. Have been day. here. You and, too. Thank uh, you, Matthew. Good to meet you. Yeah. So, brother Seifu, can you hear me, people? I'm not sure if you could hear me. Can you hear me? Are you there, Fukadu? Can you hear me? Oh, I think you cannot hear me. Yes. Texted him. I don't know. If is that my John? I saw audio is disconnected or. Oh, let me refresh. I can hear you. <laughs> let me refresh. Wait. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, there was a problem with the connection. I did follow all the discussion. 
until the point where you said you are checking if I could hear you. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Perfect. So that was really a very inspiring discussion. I just wanted both of you to know each other. You know, Seifu is an Ethiopian who came here and yeah. uh, had a very successful career here in the United States and he's giving back and he's our role model. Like, especially for the diaspora community, uh, if everybody tries a little bit of what Seifu is doing, trust me, we could do a lot of impact. So now I already see an emerging leader coming from uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, Matthew. So I just tell you, just one message I want to tell you is like, please don't feel disappointed, you know, give up with all what you see on the media, on the news. Trust me, yeah. even if all this conflict is ongoing, a lot of Ethiopian families are still nicely living together. Sometimes my wife asks me like, no, I didn't get all these things that you're telling me. Like, because I know I'm consuming from the media and she's consuming from the real life in Addis or in, yeah. you know, in Ethiopia. I know this doesn't yeah. mean problem is not happening. There are a lot of views, you know, uh, going through challenges. It depends on where you stand during all these different times, you know. It depends on what kind of actions you take. Like, uh, I don't want to discuss really the politics because it's just something which comes and goes. I have seen this thing happen in 2005 when I finished my undergraduate, when one of our friends died in campus. We're about to celebrate our graduation and one of our friends died in campus. Like, mm. it was a time when I said, there is no life, like my career is finished. But thanks God, a lot of things changed. Even I had a scholarship to go to Denmark and then back to here now. You know, these things come and go. The thing is we need to know how to navigate within all these, you know, storms and all this, you know, sad and good news. So uh, rather I'm really, you know, uh, very specific about what me, you and say for the other audience in the room can work together. We, we don't know the future can be better or bad, right? But yeah. it depends on how, what you, what is good and what's bad, how you see it and how you really face the challenge. So trust me, yeah. we have a very big opportunity and uh, say if we is going to come to Lincoln, Nebraska, I would make sure that yeah. we meet. <laughs> and uh, last time we had a meeting with Dr. John Osiri uh, from the business school. Uh, like, yeah. so we are kind of trying to really bring in together like-minded people, people who, uh, you know, awesome. sit, discuss and share and inspire each other and also connect with our home in Ethiopia. Nowadays, you know, geographical distance is no more story. You know, say if we in Europe, we are in Nebraska, there are friends from Addis, we are all on the same page, right? If we could meet like this, you know, yeah, so uh, I'm really happy that you know, the thing is, Matthew, you are far mature. We are really, you are, I don't know. You are very, you know, very critical in the way you take the discussion, the way you, uh, you know, want to engage is really amazing. So I'm very sure we, we have a lot of uh, yes, nice stories coming. So I just wanted, that's why I invited Seifu to speak, you know. So I think he is the right person because he was here, yeah. just like your mom, and he have children older than you and he did make a very big impact i'm just dreaming like matthew 10 years from today like <laughs> you know these things are going to be really really great stories and that's yeah. one of the missions of yes ethiopia is you know connecting between the diaspora community and the home and see you know ways people can help each other and learn from each other so and now i'll open the floor for a question and answer so People in the audience, please feel free to join and uh, give comments and suggestions. Um, yeah, I know one of the business owners from Addis Ababa was asking me, they are starting like a tech business and they are thinking of music production. And he was, I don't know, he, I did ask him to contact you. His name is Ashan Nafi. He is uh, also one of our emerging leaders from uh, Yes Ethiopia. Now he owns his own uh, business in Addis Ababa. And uh, awesome. yeah, he did ask me like he was also thinking ways to engage. So I should not if, if you can join. I'm trying to. Yeah. I'll say, please raise your hands and I'll give you the chance to speak. When the message, thank you so much. I don't know. 
Uh, you did no you problem. did make it easy, you know, like, you know, because uh, I could speak to a lot of Ethiopians, those in higher education. Uh, maybe for someone like Matthew, you are the best mentor. So uh, Matthew and uh, Seifu, you can be really very good uh, team together. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Happy to support Matthew. Mm -hmm. Asha Nafi, you can continue. Okay, Shfiki. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Fiki. Uh, I would like to say uh, I'm so happy to see you here, Matthew. And uh, also, Mr. Safe, as always, you're, uh, I have no idea for what you did in previous. And uh, uh, we were talking to document your story here. I hope uh, my promise this as it. <laughs> Yes, it does, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. When the time, that time will come very soon. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, I didn't listen uh, all of all of your uh, story. Mm -hmm. I really disappointed for that. There was a, a thing that I attending. I hope uh, uh, we will meet uh, yeah. and we will have we will discuss it in uh, I mean privately. Yes, yeah, yeah. uh, I am currently working on a tech startup that provides uh, IT solution based like uh, software development, website, graphic design. We, we have a lot of uh, freelancers and uh, currently also we are around, uh, there are around eight uh, IT background professionals are working with us. Mm. So uh, if there is a way that we can work, collaboratively work uh, I'm more than happy working with you, and uh, I really yeah. appreciate what you are doing, uh, specifically relating with uh, Afro-American, uh, for African-American students or like peoples. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm so happy to uh, connect and uh, working together. Thank you. For yeah. Thank you very much. I'm very uh, glad that I share you speak to Matthew because you two are like emerging leaders. Uh, Matthew is in Lincoln, Nebraska. You are in Addis Ababa. You are a kind of comparable age group. So uh, I'm very sure if you know each other at this stage, as I said earlier, like five, ten years from today, you know, just imagine how far you can work together. So, and thanks to the technology now, Ashe is working on, you know, a tech startup, and uh, he have a lot of young people working with him. And we have been discussing inspiring people who are interested in art and music production and, you know, poems and spiritual songs or wherever they want to grow. And uh, I think Matthew and Ashanafi can learn from each other and help others also to grow. So, uh, yeah. yeah, thank you, Ashanafi, for uh, connecting and sharing with uh, uh, Matthew. I have seen Ashanafi have been awarded as a training, as Ethiopian Nutrition Leaders Training. And uh, I have seen a video where they surprise you with a gift. <laughs> Tell us about that just briefly. What is the award about? Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I, I really so happy for uh, taking this training. What inspiring me about this training is, you have told us a lot about this training. Is it? And, uh, I remember the day you were sharing with me about this training, you say that it is a training that uh, changing my life so uh, i mean I, I wish maybe maybe <laughs> since i want to be transforming my personal and my professional life as uh, i was a, a, a high desire to take that to take that training and uh, I'm, I'm glad for uh, participating in the training it was a fully dedicated training we can say almost uh, uh, it, it was around 60 hours per day. <laughs> and, uh, we, we have to arrive around 12 and uh, we slept at 6, I mean, uh, around 6 or 8 a.m. in Ethiopian local time. Uh, it, it was so good. So we, was, uh, we, uh, we had a team that uh, working different tasks while training. Mm. And uh, uh, there is a story sharing time. I, I share with them uh, about our, um, I mean, what what kind of effort we do to to build our startup, the challenge we face, and uh, how we overcome. And uh, I, I think uh, they they are uh, appreciate what we are doing. Uh, 
us to us to show us to continue this work. So they, I, I selected as the best uh, uh, storyteller. I mean, and, uh, yeah, they they are awarding uh, a appreciation inquiry uh, cake. Um, uh, it, it is unforgettable, unforgettable experience for me. And uh, yeah. I also uh, would like to say thank you okay, for uh, recommending me for this training. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I've seen your name and the surprise and the people were celebrating and they say Ashenafi was the best storyteller. You know, Matthew and uh, Seifu and the audience, there is a training called Ethiopian Nutrition Leaders Network. It's where uh, you go there and join a group of, uh, let's say, 30, 28 people from all over the country chosen for a special reason because they lead or they are emerging leaders. And then they give you a training for 15 days. It's a whole day training. You wake up in the morning and maybe go to bed like 4 a.m. or just before. It. I remember it was one of the best and most exciting training. And I do recommend the students from East Ethiopia, the young people from East Ethiopia. And Ashanafi went there they're representing East Ethiopia. And he was awarded and I said, yeah, like that's what we want to see with our young people. So I really thank the Ethiopian nutrition leaders, Israel and all the people who make it happen. So I just wanted to encourage Ashen Nafi. Keep up, you're really, really an emerging leader, for sure. Yeah. You are making yeah. impact. I already see starting a company less than two years after you finish. And then, you know, like renting a, a, an office and hiring people, man, you are far ahead of us. Trust me, I'm still working on an end profit, even not sure how to make it go. So you are really brilliant. So um, that's why I wanted you and Matthew to know each other. So anyways, thank you, Ashan Nafi. I just wanted to celebrate your success and uh, we'll continue with other questions and comments. Uh, anyone in the audience who would like to add comment, please take the chance. I know there are uh, a lot of you today. It's a very big, I already see we had more than 170 people that followed this discussion. People come and go. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really glad. And uh, Matthew, your story have been one of the most interesting I see from the number of people attending. And uh, yeah, you bring us a very new perspective about the diaspora community in the United States. I didn't have, you know, a speaker like you before because Seifu is far ahead <laughs> in terms of youth representation. I think you are the first one. So you are the champion. You are our ambassador now. You represent the Ethiopian diaspora in United States. And you are the Ethiopian ambassador. So uh, any final remarks you would like to give until the others would ask you questions. Anyone who would like to ask, please forward your questions. But in between, say, uh, my brother, Matthew or Seifu, you could add more yeah. points to the discussion. I would just like to say I'm, I'm honored to, to connect further. Seifu, thank you for your words. I can already tell, you know, you have a lot of, of knowledge and experience that could only be, be gathered from your years and years of dedication. So I'm excited to continue to be a part. Um, I would also say, you know, uh, within our the community I'm trying to reach and why I want to connect them with the Ethiopian diaspora and back home there's so much that uh, we we still have to learn about each other there's a lot of tough conversations and honest conversations that we need to have and I think if, if we understand the fact that we are all together and there is a higher power who, who has called us to be, be more. I think that's something that will allow us to get through those tough conversations without any division and without any, uh, uh, you know, prejudice against each other or, or, or Ill, Ill doubt towards each other. You know, there is a higher power who, who, who is uniting all, all people of different cultures, uh, regardless of where they come from. So I just want to get that out there as a, a, another word of encouragement mm -hmm. for every in their different journeys. I would say amen to that, Matthew. Mm. <laughs> There's a higher power, of course. We all in, are in some ways uh, religious. Uh, most mm. Ethiopians are either Christians or uh, Muslim background. Uh, 
Mm. Uh, yeah, that, that, that is a very good statement on your part. I look forward to meeting you in person. I will be there in uh, uh, your state okay. sometime late, late September or early October. Awesome. We'll definitely have to connect. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, thanks much, uh, so much, Matthew and Seifu, especially the final word about, you know, the spiritual values, the higher power, the fear of God, you know, uh, mm. living and engaging within that umbrella of fear of God. And hearing this from an emerging leader, from a young leader, inspires me because nowadays sometimes I feel bad when the young people kind of like get lost, uh, you know, having no clue about uh you know what it means to be really spiritually be connected and then be grateful about the day be grateful about nature just be grateful about the sun and that we yeah. could able to walk that we are not in the hospital you know the, yeah. i mean it's uh it's really it's one of the most uh important kind of becoming a little bit blurred in some part of the uh, walk of life that i see so you are really at the best uh, kind of position at this time in your age doing and focusing from that perspective also gives you another strength and another uh, you know uh, endurance in what you do so i'm really glad that we are here together in lincoln nebraska so i'm very happy and please pass pass my warm greetings to your mom uh by the way matthew's mom is a professor here at the university of nebraska and she is really, really like making our flag high. A lot of people tell me, ah, do you know Dr. Martha Mamo? Yeah, she's an Ethiopian. I always say, she's an Ethiopian, like with a big smile. And then they say, yeah, yeah, you should know her. Like, we need this kind of people who assume highest possible positions and then promote our flag, our country, our people, Africa and the African diaspora in general. And, uh, uh, yeah. especially you know uh, mothers women leaders and all this uh, kind of stories that we need to be told so yeah just for you to know people like uh, because we didn't say as i said matthew is like an ethiopian in diaspora and his mom is a professor at the university of nebraska lincoln so i had a meeting with her and so a very big you know, networking is ongoing here, just for you to, to understand. So, uh, so I see Sosina is here. Sosi is our yes, Ethiopia focal person in Washington, D.C. She already started supporting orphanage center in Awasa. So, Sosi, if you'd like to say something about the orphanage and also uh, share with uh, uh, Matthew what you are doing, I'd be very happy to hear. Yes, a machine caller, so see. Please raise your hands and uh, tell to Marty what you are doing in Washington, D.C. Okay, yeah, so she said she's on the bus. So I'll tell you, uh, you know, the so Sosna finished their uh, master's degree in Texas and uh, she's working now in Washington, D.C. in software industry. And she has been following what we do on uh, social media here on LinkedIn. And uh, I remember she was looking for jobs the first time I met with her. Now she's employed and uh, she's helping back Ethiopians and especially, you know, the voiceless Ethiopians like children in orphanage centers. And uh, she's fundraising for that. And those of you who didn't know Sosna, she's in the discussion box. I'm in the audience. She's Sosna Safa. Uh, please connect with her. Uh, Matthew, I'll send her, her contact. She's on a bus now. She is uh, not able to speak. So, yeah. So, I'm going to switch the language also. <laughs> no now we are going to, like, so, yeah. I mean, any final words, Matthew, before I switch to Amharic, please, like, uh, most welcome to, to comment. Yeah, I would just say, uh, you know, if anyone wants to connect, uh, I'll be reaching out via LinkedIn or, or whatever uh, social media channel is, is most easy for everybody. Yeah. So I really just want to connect further with everybody here and, and learn more and gain understanding from each other. Yeah, I'm very sure you'd have a lot of Ethiopian friends now on. Like, 
uh, I'm sure you'd have a lot of connection requests just coming your way. I just sent you Sosi's uh, contact so you can add her, send her a friend request. I'm also posting your uh, LinkedIn ID on uh, my Telegram. So there are also some use attending from Telegram, those who don't have LinkedIn. So yeah, thank you very much, brother. And uh, yeah, very happy having you with us. So it's been a very nice discussion. It's one of yeah. the areas where we want to build, especially connecting with the young Ethiopian diaspora uh, to Ethiopia and Africa. So thank you so much and have Absolutely. a nice day. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Thank you.